What's going on guys, you're chillin' with Trainers Zabza, and today I've got an OU battle for you. This team is the one that I made with Dundeal, and it was featured on Showdown a lot, but I loved it so much I decided to bring it to Wi-Fi. This is a Scarfed Galvantula, so that way it's a lead Galvantula. It's pretty much to fake out the sticky web and then just bolt switch on whatever wants to try and uh, taunt or whatever me. So I can get some nice damage off and uh, just get a nice hit off on anything that wants to, say, taunt or try and trick at a Scarf or something like that. Next we've got Empoleon, which is actually not a defogger. That is a offensive Empoleon to take advantage of sticky web or opponents who try to use defog. And the same with Pontiard, also defiant, offensive, except uh, Empoleon is running Swords Dance because it can't actually do much on its own. However, Pontiard, I'm sorry, Bisharp can do plenty on its own, and instead of Swords Dance, I gave it Substitute. Now Charizard is the, <laughs> it's such a dumb, stupid set, but I love it so much. It is a defog Charizard set with defog, Roost, Solar Beam, and Flamethrower, and it is Charizard Y, and it is just it's been so reliable because no one expects Defog Charizard, and it's it's just such a surprise factor. I love it. Next, I've got Physically Defensive Weezing with T-Spikes and Willowis, and I actually had Hidden Power Rock on it for a while, but I recently changed it for Flamethrower. In this battle, it actually has Flamethrower, but in uh, some previous recordings, it has Hidden Power Rock. And, you know, I liked it, but there was a certain battle that just made me say, you know what, screw it, it's not worth it, it's not worth it for the gimmick. You know, it's a fun thing for, like, Talon Flames and Volcaronas, but it's just not worth it anymore. And you guys will see that battle later. Finally, Assault Vest Gudra with, uh, it's pretty much physical and Sap Sipper to take advantage of Sap Sipper with Dragon Tail, Earthquake, Iron Tail, and then Fire Blast for Feral Thorns. Now look at my opponent's team. Holy crap, Dragons. This is a mono dragon team. It's got Dragonite, multi scale probably. He's got the Laddie twins. Either one of them could be Mega because he asked me beforehand. So I really don't know which to expect is Mega. Uh, he's got a Garchomp, which can, I can assume to be Choice. A Tyrantrum, I don't know what that thing is. I mean, it could be Dragon Dance, it could be Choice. There's not really any way for me to tell. And finally, he's got a Noivern, which is I don't know if it's Choice or not because all these things could be Choice or they could be their own separate sets. All I know is Noivern is really fast and it hits moderately hard. But that's it for the team preview, let's get to the battle! So my opponent today is Mobone19, uh, he and I are buds on Skype and I, uh, he heard about my Race to 2k thing and he agreed to help me out with a battle. So I'm going to start with my Galvantula as he starts off with his dubstep, his Noivern, as I just go straight for the Volt Switch, it does a nice amount of damage and go into a Reptarette. Not really exp knowing what he was going to do, I thought maybe he'd try and flamethrow. I thought he might try and flamethrower. Honestly, I really did. Because he could have just gone for the dragon move, but I thought he might try and go for something super effective. Now, the way, by the way he switched out, I'm going to think he's scarfed, but I don't really find out. Because he goes into his Dragonite as I switch out and into my True Seeking, uh, or I can't remember the nickname right now, my Empoleon, but then double back into my Weezing because I can't afford this thing to be the weakness policy set. But as he shows me, he is the T-Wave T-Wave sub, and you know what's coming next, Dragon Tail. So, thankfully he's not weakness policy, um, I really had to take countermeasures in this battle, just in case some Pokemon were certain sets. Like, the, uh, we, like, I had to, like, I was so paranoid that this thing might be weakness policy Dragonite, but after T-Wave and Substitute and Dragon Tail, I felt so relieved because I knew it wasn't, uh, anymore. So I go over the Rock Tomb, try and break this up, but it does absolutely nothing. Uh, man. And it's that, this guy is just paralyzing all my team, and I'm getting the full paralysis. He's Dragon Tailing me, and it's actually kind of annoying. So now he's going to switch me out, or phase me out, into my Itsy Bitsy, my Galvantula. And, you know, the Itsy Bitsy Spider's going to go up the Dragon Spout. Nah, just kidding. He's actually going to switch out into his Garchomp. I'm guessing because he had nothing... Uh, he didn't... I don't, know, I don't know what it was. I guess he thought it would be a good chance to just force a switch, maybe. Um, he could have just gotten off some more damage, but... Uh, actually, if I hit him, it would have broke his sub anyway, so I guess this was the correct play. So here I bring in my Weezing. Um, I wanted to get the will o -Wisp off, but it just doesn't end up happening. Uh, paralysis and all that. He goes into Latios. I'm going to pull back into my True Sea King, my Empoleon. Because, you know, Empoleon's the king of the sea, and damn it, Mega Latios! Son of a... Uh, that's so hard. That's going to be hard to deal with. But, thankfully, 
Empoleon does um, check the Laddie Twins really well, considering that neither of them get any moves to hit mostly Steel or Water types, besides like Thunderbolt. Um, and I've got enough special bulk where I can take it. I go for the Rock Tomb because I just wanted to get his speed down a bit so I could come in with uh, Pawniard and knock it out. And knowing I can't take too many Psy Shocks and seeing him going for those, I think now's a good time to go into my Chess King, my Bisharp. I keep saying Pawniard, please. I'm sorry, I keep saying Pawniard. And he goes for Draco. It hurts a lot. He gets a crit. Takes me down to 1 HP. Holy crap. And you know what? Th I could have gone for the Sucker Punch here, but I was, thankfully, I'm actually max speed, um, max, uh, max speed, max attack. And with his minus one, I'm actually able to outspeed. I was really concerned that, um, he might actually, like, go for Roost or something. So I couldn't, I really couldn't risk going for the Sucker Punch. So he brings in Garchomp, goes for the Outrage, as I go into Weezing, and... Based off that damage, I do not take it well. I'm wondering if he's... He might be choice... Uh, I, either way, I'm pretty sure he's adamant. Um, because I don't take these well at all. Well, actually, you know, he might be Scarfed. I, I'm i not 100% sure. I've never actually taken Outrageous from a Garchomp before. Uh, so it's kind of hard to tell. But I am able to burn it, so thank goodness for that. And after all that, uh, now that he's confused, and after all the para-hacks I'm getting, I'm like... Okay, you know what? Hacks gods, you gotta help me out here. He's burned. Even if his outrage goes through, it's not gonna hurt too much. And I've got some defense investment. I've actually got quite a bit of de defense investment. I'm not full on physical defense, but I've got some good defense investment. And uh, my my dragon tail connects. He hits himself in the confusion. Thankfully, thank you, hacks gods. He goes for dragon pulse on my Miss Gumi, and I'm able to dragon tail him out. And this is great because most of his dragons are special attackers. And I can, this is a special wall that I can just keep uh, hitting stuff with. So he goes out into Garchomp as I bring back Miss Gumi and go into my True Sea King, my Empoleon. And I'm thinking maybe I can take the Outrage from this range at 88 HP. Uh, well, yeah, I take it pretty well, thanks, even though he's burned. And this turn, the burn is actually going to knock him out, so thank goodness for that, too. I was actually pretty worried about um, keeping my Gudra alive because I wanted to keep it for this, the Noibat. And I thought he was going to go for Draco. I mean, I could have tried to switch in my Gudra, but I wouldn't have, wouldn't have appreciated it. He gets a crit on the Draco. Probably didn't matter. I say probably, but uh, it is max HP, and uh, Polyon's pretty bulky, especially. So he goes for another Drake out as I bring in my Gumi, or Miss Gumi. And uh, it does a lot of damage, and here you're going to see I go for the Fire Blast. That may be confusing. I was actually typing to a friend on Skype, and I completely lost track of the timer. Uh, I meant to go for Dragon Tail, but Gudra is such a tank that it's just not going to matter because, as you can see, I do survive, and I'm going to be able to Dragon Tail him out. And what I Dragon Tail him out into, or correction, I knock him out with the Dragon Tail, but what he goes into afterwards is going to make it so that really didn't matter. So he goes into his N Henry VIII and goes to the Dragon Claw. The reason I stayed in is because I went for a Dragon Tail, but I couldn't afford him to be a Dragon Dance set. I couldn't afford to let him try and set up. So now Mega Evolving, I'm going to go for the Solar Beam with my Charizard. I'm not sure why he's staying in here considering he still has Dragonite. But my Drought's going to kick in. I'm going to be able to go for the Solar Beam. It's going to do an absolute metric ton of damage. And uh, I, I'm surprised. I'm just glad that it's going to be enough to two-shot it. But he goes for Dragon Tail and holy crap, that is banded. That is so banded. I mean, look at... Uh, uh, Reptaret is actually... You know, Charizard Y is actually kind of bulky, so the fact that I did that much without it being super effective is proof that he's banded. So in comes Latias. I know it's going to outspeed me, but I feel okay just letting uh, Reptar go as fodder. I don't mind. And uh, I choose to bring in my Chess King. And I am I think he's going to try and roost here, so I don't go for the Sucker Punch. I actually play my my Bisharp really well here. You know what? I just might nickname my Bisharp Pawniard, so I keep calling it Pawniard. Oh, boy. And, uh... Here, I go. I show him that I'm not messing around. I go for the knockoff as he goes for the sub. Go Get that sub out of here. I go for Sucker Punch, predicting the attack now. He does go for the attack. It knocks him out. And now he's down to his Dragonite, I think. I'm pretty sure that's his last Pokemon. And uh, I'm looking pretty good. It's two versus one. I've got at least um, my Thunder I can hit him with with my, uh, with my Galvantula. And Chess King was able to knock out, knock off the leftovers, so that's great. Except he goes for the uh, Dragon Tail, and surprisingly doesn't knock out my Bisharp, but it does get me into my Itsy Bitsy. 
and Itsy Bitsy's just gonna launch thunder after thunder after thunder to this Dragonite. So, and he's just showing me he's roosting off the damage. Thankfully, I get the paralysis, but really, there was a 10% chance of me getting paralysis and 10% chance of me missing. And since he was gonna keep roosting, it was really just a matter of time before who got which hacks. So, thankfully, this battle got a little shorter by me getting the para, but he's still gonna put up a fight till the end. He goes to the Dragon Tail, I'm going to my Chest King, I'm gonna be able to go for an Iron Head to knock him out, and that is going to be the game. So, GG Mulbone, that was actually a pretty tough match, man, for Mono Dragon. Alright, so that's it for the video. I'm not actually going to have a talk of the day today. Well, even if there is going to be a talk of the day today, it's just pretty much going to be this. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying these daily uploads, because I'm actually stuck for time, because I need to get this up before 12 a.m., so I can keep my promise and give you the daily uploads as part of my race to 2000. So, I hope you guys are enjoying the daily uploads. I really got to get this up, and I will see you guys next time.